You know, I remember when uh, I was taking my one of my first, I think, safety meetings or training, whatever facilities that I was going through for in order to get certification. And uh, you would call it first responders. I mean, that's that's kind of a new term in case you didn't know that. It didn't used to be. It used to be just, hey, you were taught first aid and you were the one who went and did it. You know, you took care of whatever the circumstances were at the moment and just dealt with it. Now we have first responders. We have all these fancy structured ideas, you know, of how to respond to emergency. But one of the new things that has come out, you know, in all this research and organization technology is instead of rushing in, you're supposed to evaluate first. You stop, assess the circumstances. In other words, you don't just run into a burning building when the roof is going to collapse. You see if you have enough time before the roof collapses in order to rescue the person. You see that there's a lot of smoke, so you either cover your face and get low to the ground so you don't get the smoke and knock yourself out. But you evaluate the circumstances. Christianity is much the same, you know. Most people think you have to fight or flight, you know, run or do, act or react. Sometimes you're just supposed to wait. Sit on it. Sometimes don't do nothing. But I'm an active person. I'm an A-type personality. I need to take charge. Really? <laughs> you think so? <laughs> Good luck. Because in learning to evaluate the circumstance or situation, you could say you stop and pray. That's the way I do, is that when I see a given circumstance, God knows me. So I know that the circumstances have come by way of his arrangement of life. He's put me in that position in life to see the circumstances and then ask him what to do. Lord, you want me to do that? You want me to dive in or do you want me to wait? Do you want me to say something? Or do you want me to be silent? The hardest part for a Christian is to trust in the Lord, to do nothing, to let God be God and let you watch and see how God operates. I know for myself, you know, I've always wanted to defend myself. You know, I've had many times where when I was a little kid, you know, growing up, I got my butt kicked. <laughs> I had people holding me by the scruff of my neck and just whomping. Funny how, you know, I never got a broken nose and never got, you know, whatever, but learn how to run fast. <laughs> learn how to talk faster. But, uh, man, I got beat up a lot, you know, and I even got beat up by girls, of all things. Man, where I was at, it was a tough neighborhood. The women were tough. <laughs> Ask my mother. You know, of course, she's dead now. But, man, I remember one time, you know, my mother, God bless her, but it didn't matter if I was in a fight, whether I won or lose, she whooped me. I couldn't ever figure that out. I didn't start it. I didn't fight back, but I got my butt kicked by my mother, as well as by everyone else. Somehow, you know, maybe she knew what she was doing. Became a peacemaker later on in life. Then I got saved, you know. <laughs> Go figure. But when I got beat up, you know, it, it taught me something, you know. First, it taught me to shut up because I'd be there mouthing off saying, Yeah, go ahead, hit me again, hit me again. You think you're tough? Yeah, right, go ahead, hit me again. Yeah, 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 that didn't hurt. Ha, I'm crying. But I didn't hurt, I don't care, no, hit me again. <laughs> doesn't work. <laughs> and they just wanted me to shut up. Shut up, son. Just shut up. <laughs> oh, well. Eventually, God saved me, you know, and made me into his child. 
as opposed to a child of the world and Satan. You know. But uh, <laughs> I still laugh now over those days because it prepared me for my later life. And what that taught me was that you size up the situation and then say a prayer and then go there. You know, is that if God tells you to go, then you go. If God tells you to do, then you do. But if he doesn't, don't do something he hasn't told you to do because you will wind up with doo-doo. Because the first do is your misconception. The second do is what you think you should do. The misconception is you didn't stop and pray and ask God what to do in that way. And the second one is you interpreted it in your own way. So the doo-doo is you, you know. And you'll put yourself in circumstances God will eventually deliver you from, but maybe he didn't want you there in the first place. And you created more of the problem than the problem was. So sometimes, even though it may be hard to say this, maybe God doesn't want you to do anything but to get out of the way and to just watch and remain silent. Hold on to your peace. In his Christ days shall the uncompromisingly righteous flourish and peace abound till there is a moon no longer. Psalm 72, 7. In the Bible, people are told to hold their peace because peace is a place of power. God tells us not to be moved when our opponents and adversaries come against us. We are to remain constant, fearless, and at peace. His word says, the Lord will fight for you, and you shall hold your peace and remain at rest. Exodus 14, 14. No matter what is happening, remain consistent. Continue treating people well. Continue walking in the fruit of the Spirit. You don't know what kind of fruit you have until somebody comes along and squeezes it. You don't know how much fruit you have until somebody is picking at it all day long. You know, that's an interesting perspective because really, until you've been crushed, you really don't know where your faith is at or what your faith is in. Until you've been tested and tried, you really don't know if you can go there. People tell me all the time, well, you know, I don't want to trust in the Lord because he might send me to Africa. Well, if he does, you don't know if you have the faith to do it until you do it. And then, because I've been a missionary, hey, you'd be surprised at how much God goes, look, watch, you know, and from inside of you springs forth the ability. And you go, but I was such a weak little, you know, nobody and know nothing. And now I seem to be speaking all these wonderful things, you know, and at the moment you were. Because until you are crushed, until you are squeezed, until, you know, you kind of cut through the surface, you really don't know what's inside. So, wait on the Lord. Trust Him. I know my wife is dumped out it because, you know, I'm, I'm fantastic in the major things. You know, I, I'm master at the majors. I'm minor in the minors. Kind of weird, huh? It's like, well, you know, when it comes to all these huge decisions, you know, I, I have no problem. It's like, oh, what are we going to do about the money? Oh, trust the Lord. Oh, what are we going to do about this bill? Oh, trust the Lord. Oh, what are we going to do about the, you know, this? Oh, trust the Lord. What are we going to do about hanging out? It's cancer! <laughs> oh, no! Look, it's a dark spot. <laughs> no, I don't do that. <laughs> I kind of go, oh, Lord, what's that? Now, wait for a few days, see what it is, you know. I used to get these, you know, sunspots on my face, still do probably, and still kind of get kind of messed up up here, you know, and kind of these moles or whatever from old age. And, you know, God one time told me, hey, you know, yeah, you need to get checked. So I said, well, you know, it's been bugging me, Lord, and man, I've been worried about it, you know. So I finally told my wife, I said, honey, you know, I prayed about it, you know, I said, honey, you know, I... I really need to check this out. I said, these are these are getting dark. You know, I said, they're getting kind of... I said, it could be skin cancer. I said, you know, I've done all my research. I've prayed about it. You know, God has finally said, just go. So I went to this, you know, 
day clinic, you know, you know the clinics, you know, you walk in, you know, emergency clinics, whatever. You know, I'm like you, you know, I want to save a buck, you know, I have insurance, but, you know, deductibles and all that junk. But, um, so I go into the clinic and, you know, they examine it and they said, it's precancerous tissue. <gasps> Cancer! I didn't do that. I went, cool. Because, see, I've always got a testimony for what I'm going to do when I die, you know. My last words, you know, I mean, I've watched all the movies. Oh, give your life to Jesus. <laughs> and the Lord says, you shall not die, but live and declare my, my works and my testimonies. The Lord, I had my death all planned out. They told me at 30 I was going to die. What happened? Don't you get with the plan? They knew better than you, God. God said, you ain't dying. You living. I went, oh, man. Come on. It's checkout time. Nope, not for me. So they sent me on to, you know, dermatologists, you know, and he said, well, we'll take a biopsy, you know, we'll check it out, you know. And so they kind of did their freeze thing and did all these other things, you know. And I said, well, you know, I said, and he says, anything else? But I said, yeah, well, I got all these kind of like moles, you know. And I said, they've been getting dark, and I used to have one growing like right here. And it was huge, and it was just, ooh, it was kind of dark and got kind of like muscly, you know, kind of like all granulomalous, you know, and kind of was like getting like, the way people say that, you know, like cancer kind of gets, it's getting dark and brown. And he says, well, that's not, but he says, I take that off for you. I went, really? You could like just get rid of it? And he goes, yeah. My mind's going, ching, ching, money, money, uh-oh. But my vanity was going, oh, but it would be so nice because I'm so self-conscious of it. So he cut it off, you know. Kind of left this one, but oh well. Cut off a few of them, you know, and said, bingo, we're done, you know. And so when I got back the results, it was clear, And but he said, stay out of, you know, the sun and all this stuff, you know, because in California, a lot of skin cancer. So anyways, I went, okay, sure, you know, never did it. <laughs> but, you know, whatever. But I'm careful. So when I waited... I still had a confidence that whether I lived or whether I died, it didn't really matter to me that if it turned out to be cancer, it's okay, cool. I can use that in a testimony. But if it did live, then I could still trust in the Lord and let him do his thing. Because the reality is, is when we have confidence, not faith, just don't go faith in it. Don't faith it, just confidence, you know, just a confidence that God is in control. Then people look at you and say, well, weren't you worried? And you go, you know, the things I was worried about really wasn't that, but more like, well, you know, can I make a movie out of this, <laughs> a video? You know, can I can I use this for the Lord? You know, can I do this? You know, those things I was not worried, but concerned, you know. And so you really need to sometimes recognize that God's plan is more important than our stand on some faith issue or some creative idea we have that we can solve somebody's problem or that we think we can do something for someone. When, if we haven't checked in with the Lord to find out what He's doing, then maybe we don't want to be doing what He isn't doing and doesn't want us to do in the end. Because after all, I think maybe based upon my experience with precancerous tissue and the good looks that I have, you know, now that I've got all these little, you know, age marks kind of removed. Okay, maybe they're not all removed. Maybe I still got a big nose. Maybe I still, you know, need to shave. Maybe I still kind of ugly. But trusting in Jesus and knowing him that we're supposed to turn to him in everything then we have confidence that on the day we stand before God, that we will be assured of our salvation because we were reassured in our life that everything we turn to God, he made right for us because he loves you. He loves me. He loves us.